This is a 2003 BMW M3 CSL, the hardcore track owned version of the old M3 that has gone down in history as one of the greatest M cars ever made. But before I tell you any more, turn up your speakers and have a listen to this. The world has gone turbocharged, and while you can't deny the fact that their acceleration is brutal, there's definitely something missing compared to a howling, naturally aspirated straight six like this. An E46 road racer, an empty mountain road, does it get any better than this? You bet it does. <laughs> what we have here is the BMW M4, one of the latest and greatest offerings from BMW's M division. And Ponch is right. The world's motoring journalists aren't unanimously in love with this car, especially when they compared it against the old E92's rev-hungry, naturally aspirated V8. But what this is, is the cutting edge of what BMW's M division has to offer, which is why I've brought it along today to run rings around that antiquated E46 that Ponch is driving. Mate, you have brought the wrong car. You reckon? Yeah, it's 12 years old. It's 11 and a half years old. Look, how much power do you have? 265 kilowatts at 7,900 RPM. 317 kilowatts from 5.5 to 7.3. How much torque do you have? 370. 550. It's not just about numbers though. It's really not. Oh, it's clearly not about interiors. Where's your sat nav? Where are your drink holders? Where's your sense of adventure, mate? Come on, juggling a coffee in your lap, you know? Look at your rear seats, they're made of plastic. Yeah, but if you care about that stuff, you would have bought a normal oh. M3 anyway. You know? But how do you even get in here? No one wants to sit in the back there. It's just for people you hate, you know, you, your mother-in-law. So you bought a, a car that people can't even sit in the back of? If you wanted to do that, you buy the normal M3. The CSL is about lightness. You got your carbon fibre roof. That's got a carbon fibre roof. No, uh, that one's got a sunroof. Fail. <laughs> <laughs> does it really have a sunroof? Yeah, it does. Oh my God, who would ever option that on one of those things? I don't know. How embarrassing. Still, this is the real thing. No, that thing is better in every measurable way. You know what? There's a track about five minutes down the road. I vote we take both of these two here and see who's king. If you want to, but it's going to be embarrassing for you, Punch, but let's do it. <laughs> what have you done to my seat? Just okay. been slapped on the wrist for having too much uh, sideways fun. I was just trying to do my job. Although you can see someone was doing their job here and <laughs> and a little bit over there. So uh, I guess we'll just have to go and do something a little more sensible. What, like flat out in a straight line rather than sideways? Exactly. So to completely humiliate Ponchard, not that I really need to because he's wearing a purple shirt, I've organised a little drag race. This should be a walkover. Woo! Wheel spin city! <laughs> Nailed him, bud. <laughs> Victory! So I'm going to admit something. That drag race wasn't as convincing as I thought it was going to be. But you won. But I absolutely smashed it. And I feel I had more fun. I had wheel spin all through the first three gears. I was hooking the thing up. It was heaps of fun. Your thing just looked like a walk in the park. Well, I was just worried you were going to spear sideways and run into me while you are just, you know, smoking it up everywhere, adding all this opposite lock. You know, I was nailed to the road. Mission accomplished. Boring, Boring and loser. A equal or loser. if not, even not 
almost ahead until three quarters of the way down to those. What was that word? Almost. That's loser speak, mate. <laughs> yeah. I think it's time that I tried your old car. Okay. And we'll see if I can handle the wild beast that seemed to almost overcome your ability. Please. <laughs> <laughs> now look, I'll admit I've probably been a little bit mean about this car, so I'm genuinely interested to see if it can live up to all the hype. Oh, that does sound good. Oh. <laughs> that sounds amazing. The M4 is ballistic, like seriously ballistic. It blitzes the CSL once it's moving. And the changes in the dual clutch is like lightning. Even the steering, straight in like lightning, instantly unbalanced. Those things I said about this car being rubber are probably a little bit unfair. Definitely a little bit unfair. It feels a little bit kit car, if I'm honest, compared to the M4. Oh, but this is, this is its party trick. Wind it out six. Seven, seven, eight, there chain. Woo! Down changes are really good. I'm surprised at how good they are with this single clutch box, as you can see from there. Up changes are very violent. It feels like you're getting hit in the back of the head by a sledgehammer. Do you care that the interior is bare bones that oh people can't fit in the back of this thing. Well, right now, right here, when oh, it does that, no, nah, I don't care about any of that. I think that it's a shame that the natural aspirated engine's going, but you can't take away from this twin turbo three liter in this car that it's. It's effortless, it has so much personality, but it's not a CSL. I was willing to be swayed by the CSL, but the M4 isn't only faster, but has so many levels of personality, I think it's one of the greatest M cars ever made. Have you seen the light punch? <laughs> well, I love the M4, you know I do. I gave the bloody thing 9 out of 10 in the magazine. But there's definitely things to be learnt about the BMW CSL. It's a lighter, tighter, sweeter, more accessible car, yet it's actually more in your face. It's just easier to get along with. The M4 takes too much time. Yeah. So, what would you have? Are you kidding? Come on! <laughs> Come it's on! so much faster! Look, it's got a beauty spot that's an air intake. How cool is that? I think cool. This is cool. It had a bonnet bolt first. The gearbox in that is That one's even got a carbon fiber roof. That one's got a bloody sunroof. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.